class. Okay. We're going to start by configuring a storage pool for five of the disks that we've, we've added to the server. We're going to create a three-way mirror volume, which of course you guys know what the mirror volume is. Is that not correct? But we're going to be using a three-way mirror volume. We're going to also copy files from the volume to verify that they are visible. Then we're going to try to fill a physical disk out of those volumes and see how it works. You know when one physical drive fails? We want to see if the volume is still active. Then we're going to verify if the file is still accessible. And we're going to add a new disk to the broken disk we filled. Are we together? Okay, let's start with the first option. Let's go to task one. Are you on your server manager? Okay. Now, can you um, go to where you have file and storage services? Can you click on that? File and storage services. Now, do you see the word there that says storage pool? Can you click on that? It's loading data, right? It's scanning. Just let's be patient. You're going to see. And that is it. Now, did you see all the physical drive we added on the computer system? Yes. Well, you notice that the only drives that we can see here are the drives that we have not initialized. Yes. So it's missing, right? Only the drives we've not initialized, they are not here. Uh, only the drives we've not initialized that are appearing here. The ones we've initialized, uh, we've initialized they are automatically not uh, part of this uh, physical disk. But you and I know we have more than this physical disk on the system. So always take note of that. That is why they're not initialize it. Okay. Now, that is, of course, your disks that are valuable. Now, the next step we're going to do, we're going to create a storage pool. Are we together? We're going to create a storage pool. Now, under the pool, under storage pool uh, icon, you see the task. So, we're going to expand that and say create new storage what? Pool. So, new storage pool. Click on that. We'll click next. Now, we're asked to give you the name called what? Storage what? Storage uh, pool one. Is that not correct? Now, if you notice also, it also tells us which server you want to create the pool on as well. So if we have our two servers or three servers added, we can also set up where we are creating the storage pool as well. But we only have one server system, right? Okay, that is your description if you want to write any information about the drive. We're going to click Next. Now, did you notice there, by default, it's giving us the drives. It tells us even... Your ROPM will also show as well. Now, in a, in a, in a more uh, physical environment, it will tell you the ROPM, the speed. Are you getting me? So what we're trying to do, we're actually combining multiple speeds together. Uh, you can expand it. It tells you the location where the drives are. Server 1, Server 1, Server 1. It tells you the capacity. Model, you're using virtual box. Just a minute. <laughs> Let's continue. OK. Those are the physical disks. Now, now you notice they are arranged in order. Disk 1, of course, we're using disk 2, right? So you jump to disk 3, 4, 5, 6, and what? 7. So we are asked to add 5 of those disks. Is that not correct? So we are to take disk what? 3, disk what? 4, disk what? Disk what? And disk what? Now, did you notice something? If you check on allocation, did you see where it says automatic? Yes. Now, if you come, if you go to the drop-down list there, do you see hot spare? Yes. And do you see manual? Yes. Now, automatic means allocate the entire space. Now, if you were to click manual, of course, it will manually allocate the space. Are you getting me? Meaning, we do not recommend using both automatic and manual allocation at the same time. Now, manual allocation is like you are, you are going to specify the amount of size that will be given. Now, hot spare, it's simple. Hot spare is just that it will be the, the drive will be acting on behalf of a particular drive. Meaning, if a, a drive gets um, corrupted or something happened, that particular drive becomes a spare that will be used in replacement of that. But we're not doing that for now. So we're going to select automatic. We're going to click next. Now, if you notice, the total is how many? Thirty gig, right? Yes. So we'll click next. Now you notice there. That's a summary page. 
um, server one. It's not clustered. It's a storage space, storage pool one, capacity 30 gig. You can see all the physical disks that are part of it. So we we'll click on what? Create. Now that's the start. That's tax one. We're going to tax two now. Now, one of the good things about this, one of the completed of uh, creating the, the storage pool, updated the catch, created the pool, gathered the, uh, gathered the information. Now, if you notice, there's a checkbox here that says, create a new virtual disk when this wizard closes. Now, if you check that box, the moment you click on the close button, another wizard will come up, which actually leads us to task two, to create a three-way mirrored virtual what? Disk. So if you use that box, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, you can close it, go back and do it manually. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I'll click on, I'll check the box now, and I'll click on what? Close. And you notice the wizard pops up. Mm -hmm. Now I can easily also come here on the task, right-click, and still initialize the same wizard as well. So we'll just work with the wizard there. Now that is the wizard now. Now begin. We'll click next. Now you notice automatically brings up the storage pool. Is that not correct? That's the capacity there. Then we'll click next. Now we're going to give it a name. According to the uh, virtual disk, we're asked to give it mirrored what? Mirrored disk. So we'll type mirrored space disk. Are we together? Now, if you notice there, it says creates a storage tie on this virtual disk. It says what storage tie does is that it enables automatic movement of most recent files to for to access the file faster by using what? SS what? SSD storage. But we are not using SSD, right? So that's why it's greater. Huh? So we'll click on next. Now, what are, what's our settings? We're creating a mirror volume, right? Now, simple volume means it's, it's like RAID 0, where you combine all the drives together. Now, you all know parity is where you're creating like RAID 5, right? Then this is mirrored volume, right? Now, let's look at mirrored volume. It says, with mirrored volume, data is duplicated on two or three disks. Increasing what? Reliability. But reducing what? Capacity. Are we together? It says, the storage layout requires at least two disks to protect you from a single what? Failure, or at least five disks to protect you for two simultaneous disk words. So that's why we're taking five. Are we following? So always read information, huh? And of course, this will also reduce capacity, and this words increases what capacity. So we we'll take new word volume. We we'll click next. Now, according to the lab, we're asked to create a uh, three-way, right? Not two-way. Is that not correct? So we select three way because the two volumes you have will not be the one that will be if and there's a failure, we'll be able to continue to work within our system. So we're taking what three way. We'll click next. Now is it a thing or fixed? Now do you guys remember we talked about dynamic expanding and fixed? Now dynamic expanding, like you all know, the drive expands as you store content. Is that not correct? Now let's look at the word that thing. He said the thing. The thin volume provisioning type. It said for the thin, the volume uses space from the storage pool as needed, which is, of course, dynamic what? Expanding. If we were to put it in the way we understand it. Now, we, with fix, it uses the entire what? Capacity. We are, we are not using fix. So we're going to go and click on what? Thin. And we'll click next. Now, what, we need to specify the amount of space we want to start with. And according to the lab, we have to start with what? 10 what? 10 gig. Oh, sorry. 10 gig, right? Of course, you have terabytes and you have what? Megabytes. Are we together? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll click on next. Now, that is a summary page. Are we following? Yes, sir. And that is the virtual what? Disk. And we click on what? Create. So I like to run through. Like the way we had it before with creating virtual disk, you now see the you see the, the the icon again. It says create what? A volume when this wizard what closes. Because we are following the step by step. We created a storage pool. From the pool, we created what? A virtual what? 
disk. From the virtual disk, we're creating what? A volume. Are we together? Because the virtual disk is actually a physical disk according to the computer right now. So we are not creating the volume from the disk. So click on close, and the wizard pops up to create what? A simple what? Volume, volume from a storage space. So we'll click next. Of course, if you notice, we have two physical disks now. Disk one and what? Which doesn't make sense. We only had disk one to disk seven. So it created a virtual what? Hard disk of the 30 gig. <clears throat> Are we together? So let's select this eight. So we'll click next. And the volume size will accept the default, which is 10 gig. We'll click next. What letter are we supposed to use? H. So we'll come to the drop down menu, we'll select H. And we'll click next. And what's the file system? So we'll come here, we'll say RFS. And what is the volume label? So it's type mirrored, mirrored volume. Okay, and that is it. We click next. Of course, it shows you the um, the summary of everything you've set up, and is exactly what we want. Is that not correct? So we click create. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, now the, the task has completed, so I'm going to click on close. Sir, answer that question. Why did we choose uh, this eight instead of this one, or was it just because that's my default? No, no, remember, we joined. Can I have one class? Remember, we joined five disks together to make one. So it generated another disk, which is disk eight of the virtual disk we created, which is a mirrored volume. A mirror disk, actually. It was not a volume we created. We created a mirror disk. And I said, think, think about the volume as a physical, a hardware RAID that is set up already in your desktop, where you connect the RAID controllers. It's already set up as RAID 5 or RAID 1 or RAID, or RAID 0. So you just add them together, but on your computer, it appears as one drive. But on the back end, it's actually what? A RAID. That's exactly what we did. So we are, we are only, remember we skipped disk, uh, disk three. Was it disk three we skipped? Two, two, two. No, no, no. We skipped one disk. One. Was it disk one? Yeah. One. We skipped disk one and we started from disk three to disk seven. So that's why if you notice, there's only one physical disk that is still there in the computer. Now let's refresh and see if everything is going to show up here. So come in here and click on refresh. And let's see what happens. So we're refreshing the data now, and let's give it a Y. Remember, these are, these are physical disk, and this is a what? A virtual what? A virtual disk. Now, of course, we don't have any virtual disk on the on the, the, the Promega uh, storage space, right? So we'll click on storage pool, right? So click on storage pool, and you see your disk will show up. Did you see that? That's your 10 gig, is that not correct? Yeah, so, and of course, our allocation is automatic, is that not correct? So that's how to be allocating it, until it gets to 30 gig, because we combine, these are all the disks we combine together, is that not correct? Now let's confirm on our Windows Explorer if we have a drive called drive H. Yes, yes. Do you have a drive H? Yes. Exactly. It actually says 10 gig. But remember, if you put more content, it will expand. It will expand, it will expand, it will expand, it will expand until you get to 30 gig. Okay. Now, um, we're asked to make a copy, right? Okay, can we go to command prompt? Go to command prompt. You see command prompt at me. Right click on the start, you see command prompt at me, right? Click on it. Now type the type uh, copy 
space C, double colon, backward slash windows, backward slash system 32, backward slash write dot exe space h double colon backward slash have you typed that okay press enter and you notice it says one file is what let's verify that we'll go to drive h open it and we can verify that the file is there is that not correct so if you want to use command prompt to if you want to use command line to copy file that's how to do it huh yeah, just go take the URL path, uh, the, the UNC path, then you, you copy the file to the location. Okay, now let's remove one of the physical disks. Guys, we're going to remove one of these physical disks on the computer system. Now, we know we can remove it while the computer is off, uh, it's on, right? So I'm going to shut down my server, then I'm going to remove one of the drive. Are we together? So I'm going to shut down, then... After I'm, uh, I'm finishing shutting down, I'll remove. I'll go to the virtual machine, remove one of the drive. Then I'm going to restart the server system. Are we together? Are we together? Okay. So I'm going to pause. Hey guys, now this is my virtual machine. I'm asked to remove disk five. Are we together? So I'm going to go to my settings, and I'm going to go to storage. And that's disk five, right? So all I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna click remove. That's all. Remove the drive. Just click remove the button and click OK. So the next step is to start now. You see that disk five has been removed, right? So I'm gonna start my computer. So my server is gonna start up. And once it's boot up to the desktop, <clears throat> then we'll probably proceed. Okay, I'm logged in now. I'm logged in now. One class, one class. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. Now, we all know that we failed one disk, right? Yeah. Or let's assume that actually an error occurred on one of the physical disks failed, which was disk 5. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my browser. Let's verify that we still have our drive, our drive H. Let's go and verify our drive H is still there. It's still there, is that not correct? Mm -hmm. If you open it, do you still have the file right there? Huh? Okay, that is correct. So let's wait for the server manager to finish um, refreshing and we'll go to the storage space. So let's just wait for it to finish doing its, its work. Um, now, can we click on file and storage services? Okay. <clears throat> now, that's storage pool, right? Is that not correct? Okay, it's loading data. Wow, there's an icon, there's an error somewhere. Uh, we can see it there, right? There's an error, and we are told there's an error somewhere. It said lost communication, right? Mm -hmm. Is that not correct? Mm -hmm. If you right click and say property, it tells you exactly what happened with the disk. Health states, it says warning. Operational status, what happened? What happened? Lost, lost communication. Say communication was lost from the drive. Now let's click on details. Okay, now if you come back here and we need to add a disk to what? We need to add a disk to do what? To replace it. Now if you go to the mirror disk, right click on it and go to property, you notice it shows you your head states and it says operational status what? Degraded. Is that not correct? Degraded means something is missing, right? Okay. So now we need to fix the problem. Is that not correct? 
So to fix the problem, it's simple. We need to add a new disk. Is that not correct? So we can go to the storage pool itself. And we right click and we say add the what? Physical what? Disk. We only have one here, right? Is that not correct? So we click on that disk and we click on what? Okay. It's adding and the disk has added. Is that not correct? Now this guy will still have an error there, so we need it. We need to remove this disk. Is that not correct? Now I can easily right click here and say what? Remove. Is that not correct? That is a good way. Uh, that's a good way to remove it. But we're actually use a command line to get the disk out. So let's go open our PowerShell. Run. Can you go to your PowerShell? Then you say run as administrator. Look at it. Then run as administrator. We want to get this disk out. We can use the GUI. I've showed you how to use the GUI with, uh, interface to remove it. So we we'll type get disk. Get physical. Sorry, get physical. Disk, press enter. Okay, you can see there, lost communication, right? So what we need to do now is to type um, dollar sign, disk equals, sorry, this space equals, get space dash, physical disk space dash friendly friendly name space uh, what's the disk is actually is disk minus one, right? Mm -hmm. Is it not correct? Press enter. Okay, just type the whole name physical. Physical disk yeah. minus one, the press enter. Then we we'll type the word remove dash physical disk <laughs> space dash. Physical disk space dollar sign disk dash storage pool friendly name storage pool one press enter um how did you spell our storage pool uh we we'll just say storage uh pool oh we just we didn't write pool one we just said pool we just did like this right so press enter now it's going to ask us uh yes or no definitely it says type for yes if for yes to all so we just type yes. Is that not correct? Huh? So we type Y. Huh? So we type Y and we say enter. And it's removing the physical drive. And let's go back to the server manager. 
Now, if we come back here and refresh, and let's see what happens after we've refreshed, and see if everything is fine. Okay, guys, it looks like everything is fine now. The error is gone and it has disappeared. That is how to remove. You can remove it physically the same way I showed you, but this is the command way of taking it out. Actually, I think we made a mistake on the storage pool. We actually wrote the name was actually storage P O, and instead of the L to be I, we actually put um, a one there. So it was actually P O. But I don't know what you typed there. Maybe you typed storage pool one. Yeah, if you type storage pool one, it's fine. But mine, I actually just wrote P O O then the one. So that was the correction I did, and the command went through. So it's the same way the command is written there as well. Okay, guys, that's it. That is it. That is it. That is it. That is it. Thank you very much.